Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Justice Hooney has been given a tough assignment for his first fight on his matchroom deal. He will be facing Andrew Tabiti, the former cruiserweight, on the 17th of June. This is on the Pro Grey Zorilla undercard. So when I heard that this fight was announced, I thought they are not giving him any soft lob first up unlike Dempsey McKean who's been given a, a diet of um, pretty marginal journeymen you know those sorts of opponents Andrew Tabiti is more than a live dog in this fight actually this could be a fight that's very evenly matched Justice Hooney is slightly bigger but I think in terms of the advantages in terms of speed this might be the first fight where Justice Hooney doesn't have it all his own way Andrew Tabiti was a good cruiserweight with some decent wins. He's moved up to heavyweight. He fought James Wilson on the Joshua and Usyk card in Saudi Arabia in August last year. And he looked good against Wilson. Wilson ended up gassing and retiring retiring on his uh, stool, what, after about five rounds or so. And I thought for his debut fight at heavyweight, he looked pretty good. And if he was matched well, then he could potentially make a little bit of noise. And I think this is relatively good matchmaking for Andrew Dabiti. Because Hooney's not a huge heavyweight. He's not a big puncher. And actually, I think Andrew Dabiti probably has the faster hand speed. And, you know, I think some of the other things in terms of punching power, foot speed, and uh, general abilities and technical skills are relatively even. I do think that this is quite a tough ask for Justice Hooney first up. It's not a out-and-out journeyman as uh, some others sometimes get when they sign on to Matchroom, you know, get a warm-up and then into something bigger and better. So Justice Hooney is showing his ambition here, taking on a tough test. His most recent opponents, Kiki Toa Latelli and before that Joe Goodall, they were New Zealand and Australian heavyweights and domestic level at best. At best, you know Andrew Tabiti, I think, is a cut above. And the thing is, Justice Hooney likes to get into a bit of a tear up. He likes to fight like a puncher, throw a lot of shots, but he also gets hit with a lot of shots. So there's going to be openings for Andrew Tabiti to counter and catch Justice Hooney. So this could end up being quite fun. Or potentially because these guys are similar in terms of the way that they fight in some respects in their, their skill set. Maybe some of those uh, different things that they do will negate each other. Perhaps they will be looking to do similar things and ultimately it's going to end up in a stalemate. So I do think that this is quite interesting. There had been talk that Hooney was going to be facing Sergei Kuzman when I think a Connor Ben card was mooted for June or July in Saudi Arabia or the Middle East. It never came to anything. And I thought then, when that was talked about, that's a tough fight. Sergei Kuzman is a puncher, but actually Hooney with his um, footwork and his ability to move and um, you know jump in and out probably was going to be able to, you know, apart from the risk, outbox him. But in Tabiti, he might be the guy with the slower hand speed. And because he's not a big puncher, you know, I'm not sure that Andrew Tabiti is going to be going in there thinking, you know, I'm going to get knocked out here. Or, you know, he might be a little bit more aggressive or a little bit more forthright in terms of, you know, sitting down on his punches and willing to trade with Hooney because he knows that Hooney doesn't have that Deontay Wilder one hit quit or anything like that. So from that perspective, it's quite interesting. Um, he had been injured after that Kiki Toa Latelli fight. Well, they had sort of said it was uh, his hands had gotten very uh, sore. And, you know, that was as a result of wearing punches gloves. And multiple times his hands have either got sore or he's been injured a couple of times. So they had said going forward, they're going to be changing the sort of gloves that he wears. So that could also mean that Hooney's got less you know, on his punches if he's going to be wearing gloves that are more protective of his hands. So we could end up having a relatively fast-paced, high-volume affair where both guys are letting their hands go, catching each other. You know, it does have the ingredients to be a fun fight. But then sometimes these sorts of matchups can end up being, you know, a little bit of a stalemate. So, you know, let's hope we don't see that. 
But Tabiti, you know, his second fight at heavyweight, Justice Hooney's a 7-0 prospect, moving up from, you know, Australian domestic level fighters. So this is a step up for both in terms of their opposition at heavyweight. So it's quite well matched. And I guess the good thing is for Justice Hooney, because he's still, what, 23, 24 years old, if he does have a close fight and loses, or, you know, if he got stopped or whatever... I don't think it necessarily hurts a stock too much just because he can come again. Andrew Tabiti is a little bit more seasoned in terms of, you know, he had a decent run at cruiserweight uh, before moving up more recently to heavyweight. So, you know, Tabiti might be a bit of a, a longer claw back. I mean, no one is necessarily predicting Andrew Tabiti to do anything major at heavyweight. Whereas obviously Justice Hooney had a bit of buzz from the amateur days, uh, medalist at the, what was the 2019 uh, World Championships, was meant to go to the Tokyo Olympics, but injured his hands. He was thought of as a medal prospect. And yeah, it's been a really interesting career for him so far because some of the names that he's fought, he's fought much better opposition than a regular prospect would, but also a few interesting things that have happened, like that weird where he has apparently dropped on his head incident where he was concussed with some different hand injuries and the different, you know, his promoters wheeling him out every couple of months for fights, which obviously, um, in my view, led to injuries. So there's kind of been a question about management and mismanagement and What's he doing? The hand injuries, you know, that's a concern early in your career. So he's had, what, the best part of six months off by the time that he's going to be in the ring there with Andrew Tabiti. So, you know, some questions might be answered. Um, and it is his first fight. They haven't obviously rushed him onto a card. They've given him the time to, to heal, uh, maybe have a rest, get those hands right. And I guess we're going to see uh, where he's really at on June 17. I think in terms of the ceiling, I think, Justice Hooney's ceiling has maybe been, at least in my eyes, maybe some others as well, been coming down a little bit with some of these other peripheral issues with his career. But um, this is going to be a barometer of where he's at, where the development's at. He's been training in the United States, I believe, what, with Justin Fortune. So I guess we're going to see. Is Justice Hooney progressing and Andrew Tabiti is at the, the right test at the right time? Or is it a step too far at this point? What do you make of it all? I like the fight. Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.